I got a call, call to order at 6 p.m. for the Environmental Sustainability Committee meeting. Um, Rob, can, oh no, we do have corn. Never mind. We can call. Okay. Yeah, I was, I was told I had to call to order anyway at, at the time. So um, everybody's coming right in on time. <laughs> there we go. Let's give it another minute. Hello. Hi, Mary. Uh, maybe we can introduce, do introductions, because we have some new, I know we have new students and maybe some new members of the public too. Yeah. Um, I was hoping Ira might be, I'll just give her a minute. Look, uh, yeah, I guess we can start with public participation anyway. Is there any members of the public want to say anything? I see a couple uh, of faces on there. Actually, uh, basically, I've been doing lots of uh, takeout lately. And Carol, you have to, um, sorry, yeah. you have to introduce yourself. And, uh, oh, Carol, Carol Zubek, uh, uh, 294 uh, Main Street. Thank you. So I've been doing a lot of takeout lately and I toss in comments like, hey, you don't need to toss in the, the plastic. And so I I was actually going to post something on sustainable Wakefield and try to encourage uh, us to do that so they get in the habit. And I toss and it's like, you, you don't need to bother, save yourself some money. So, you know, yeah, I mean, just try make it positive. But also I noticed, I totally understand the black plastic thing, but unfortunately that's actually one of the best quality and it actually reduces the amount of packaging, other packaging, because it it's it keeps um, it doesn't leak as much, and like the paper bags that it, um, often come in doesn't get messy. So you can put it in the regular recycling versus, of course, you guys know me. I'm I'm composting away, um, both back um, uh, with the church, and I'm psyched to have like four people from the church. I never knew they were really into it. They're helping, but anyways. Um, the other real key thing it's exciting is TerraCycle is partnered with Rubbermaid and I just ordered my first uh, box and they said they'd work with restaurants to have uh, um, bins to put the black plastic in and it doesn't have to be fully cleaned out, just not um, water, I mean, just uh, liquid and messy. So I understand we have to work around the COVID protocols, but they basically say we've been able to and Starbucks actually has a program in Europe or they started in August because they've proven that it actually works. And there's a lot of business marketing you could do with this because um, uh, Websteron has a two minute video and they actually kind of knock styrofoam as far as it's not a good for, you know, it's not good for your restaurant. It's not a good quality thing. Um, and they list all the places where styrofoam is banned. So we can, you could really, I basically, I guess I'm offering to help to uh, be on any kind of committee I'd, um, to, to help with it. So just thought I'd toss that out there. Okay. All right. Thanks. If you want to send us that information, we, we, I can uh, forward it. And yeah, when we set something up, I can let you know. Uh, is there any other members of the public would like to participate? Hi, my name's Marie Radzinski, and Hi. I I'm live in um, Wakefield. I live at 28 Court Street, and so I've been um, a resident here for about almost 30 years, and um, I run a business called Lakeside Mindfulness, and I try to do mindfulness programs down at the lake all the time, but I used to run a lot of retreats um, at Rolling Ridge in North Andover, and I've run some other programs. Um, but I wanted to um, connect with you guys because I just got an electric vehicle and I'm also an active climate um, control person. And we run a group called Awakening for Earth out of Cambridge and Somerville. And um, we love to collaborate with people that are, you know, um, into sustainable, um, living and trying to create this type of environment. So I'd be love, love to talk to you guys more about what I do for um, people who are trying to, who do this work and just to support them in other ways of giving them some meditations or things like that. And then um, to also just 
communicate more about what you, your group is doing here in Wakefield and how I can, um, you know, be involved more with the group and, you know, try and support you guys and support each other, right? So thank you so much for all the work you're doing here. And um, I've been working with Carol for a while um, and we've gone back and forth on different groups. And, you know, I like to converse with her about things because I know she has a ton of information which she just shared and um, so much more, but thank you all so much for all you do. Appreciate it. Oh, thanks for that. If you, if you, um, if you go on the website and the town website you can find the email address there okay you, could, you can send us your contact info we can put perfect it's, it's, it's under uh, committees uh, under environmental sustainability committee we have our own email address there if you want environmental to sustainable committees okay i'll i'll do that i i, okay. I think i've met julie uh, a couple times maybe once or twice oh, Some okay. other people look familiar but i will definitely do that thanks so much rob uh, you're welcome. Thanks. I think the, what is, the email is esc uh, us. The chat. Uh, oh, thank you. Yeah, esc at wakefield dot ma dot us. Yeah. There it is, Marie. It's in the chat. Oh, thank you. Okay, thanks so much. Got it. Oh, and actually, it's on the bottom of the agenda as well. Yeah. Okay. Uh, <laughs> moving on. Um, approval of minutes. I didn't. We haven't done the minutes, so. Uh, we'll I didn't move, send them out. We'll move on. We will move on. Um, I'm going to jump around a little bit. I'm going to start off with the student liaison introductions. Um, I think everybody's on. Hang on. There's a couple of screens. Right. So I'm just going to go around. If I'll, I could start, I'm Rob Darnell, the chair of the Environmental S Sustainability Committee. I, I live in town. I have one daughter and I'm a general contractor. Um, I'm just going to go, go around the, my screen if everybody wants to introduce themselves. And then when we get to the students, if you want to say something, feel free. Um, Julie, would you like to? Hi, I'm Julie Smith Galvin. Um, I'm a town councillor um, and just really excited to have all the students here. Thank you so much. Thanks. Uh, Tom? Hi, uh, Tom Betcher. I am the Wakefield. I'm a Wakefield Municipal Gas um, Commissioner, and I'm the liaison to the Environmental Sustainability Committee from that board. Uh, live in town as well. I have uh, two daughters, uh, both in Woodville Elementary School. Um, you know, uh, energy and environmental are things that are of interest to me, as well as uh, technology, which is what I do for my day job. Thanks. Uh, Uma. Hi. Hi, that's me. My name's Uma Gerwak. I go by she, her pronouns, and I live in the Greenwood section of Wakefield. I am the liaison from the Youth Council. Thanks for joining us. Um, Joe? Hi, everybody. Uh, Joe Conway, Director of Public Works. Welcome to the group. And uh, Eddie? Hi, I'm Addie. Um, I'm a junior at the high school. I'm a student liaison. Um, yeah, I'm excited to work with everyone. Thanks. And Robin? Hi, I'm Robin Greenberg. I'm the secretary of the committee. Uh, my day job is I'm an architect. Uh, in the moment, I'm a project manager for the Lowell High School. So my interest, while it does include buildings and infrastructure, I'm a big gardener and uh, sustainable living practices. Um, oh, Mary. Hi there, I'm Mary Hatcher. I'm the vice chair and I'm a resident representative. Um, I live in Greenwood. I think Uma, you said you live in Greenwood, so we're neighbors. Um, and I do also have a daughter in the school system in elementary school who Knows both Tom and Rob's daughters very well. <laughs> um, and uh, uh, Nick. Hi, I'm Nick Polari. I'm a junior at the high school. I live in the Woodville section of Wakefield, and I'm also on the youth council. Hey, nice to meet you. And um, Susie. I'm Susie Bayer. I am the 
um, school committee liaison to the committee. I've got uh, twin eighth graders at the Galvin who will be heading to the high school next year. And I am, we are kind of, besides kind of being the liaison for the schools where we're really focused on how can we improve re recycling um, and food rescue in the schools, which obviously right now is not something that we can focus on, but um, in the future, we hope to get back to that. Um, but we are also kind of focused on the building of the, the new high school and making sure that that's kind of a sustainable um, uh, environmentally, uh, I don't even know what the right word is, <laughs> but um, that we build it right. <laughs> we, right. And, we, and, we, uh, and we, we really make some good decisions around um, being uh, environmentally responsible at the very least. Um, and then we're uh, avid composters here at home. And, um, and so this is kind of a, an interest of mine kind of outside of school committee as well. Thanks. Um, Abigail? Hi, I'm Abby oh. Lane. Um, I live in the Dole Bay area and I'm a junior and I'm a student liaison and I'm on this committee and the Queen Lake committee and I'm excited to work with everyone. Right, thanks. And uh, Myra. Oh, yes. Hi, I'm Myra Sessions. Uh, I live in the Woodville district. Um, I am a citizen, uh, what is it, what do we call the citizen member of the committee? Um, I, I feel like I work in healthcare, so I'm a, I'm a healthcare consultant in my day job. Um, I feel like I have learned such a tremendous amount on this committee, and I feel like sort of being environmentally minded ourselves, um, I just feel like it's been such an eye-opening and I'm really thinking about how can we improve the livability and the environmental impact of our town. Um, and I've been really inspired about sort of the ideas and the ability to get things done. Um, and I think we have a lot of interesting things on our agenda this year, and so um, I'm really looking forward to it. muted Rob. Right. I think I think that I didn't miss anyone, did I? Oh, just yeah, Melissa, Nick. just because she's working on one of our subcommittees too. Did oh. you miss Nick? I don't think anyone introduced Nick. Oh I yeah, Nick no, I was introduced. Yeah. Oh I'm sorry. Sorry <laughs> Nick. Joseph go. So many people. Uh, I'm Melissa Houston, um, and I've been working with the committee on the uh, styrofoam ban and the plastic uh, bylaw plastic reduction bylaw, um, working with businesses uh, alongside Susie and Julie to uh, implement those bylaws this year. Thanks. Thanks for that. So Rob, can I, can I put our students a little bit on the, on the spot? I mean, you all can say no if you don't want to, but I'm curious if you have, um, especially Nick and, and Abby and Uma, I think, who are sort of newer to us, but also um, Addie, who's been with us for some time, if there's anything in particular that, that made you inspired to, to join the committee or anything in particular that you would like us to see to see us do over the course of this year. Is this, is this on the agenda, Rob? It's part of the discussion, yeah, sure. If they have, want to chime in. I'll go Nick. first. Oh, there you go. <laughs> okay, so I joined because I think that the environment is not a topic that people usually focus on as much as I think it should be. And if it, joining this would help draw attention to the issue, that would be have, make me pretty happy. And I think in last meeting, Sophie mentioned being more active on social media and like putting more things about like how we can be healthier. And I think that that's probably a good idea. I agree with that one. Thanks. I just yeah. want Sophie did say she couldn't make it tonight because she has a softball, I think. So um, who who would like to go next? Chime in. Um, like Uma said, like I agree about it's important to draw attention to the issues. And I agree with what was said about like the takeout boxes and stuff. I think there could be like a lot done towards reducing waste and like maybe more late cleanups would be helpful too. Yeah, I agree with the points Uma and Abby said, and also this is the town I live in, so I just generally care about keeping Wakefield a healthy and safe environment. Thanks for that. Um, so I guess, would anybody else like to chime in on the introductions? 
and then he said, I mean, I can share why I was originally inspired. I've been on the committee for like about a year now. Um, and I was originally inspired because I was like really upset about the climate and like I got into the climate movement like through Greta Thunberg and everything that was happening at the time. And I really found this place to be like satisfying the need to like make a difference. So, and I've been happy with what we've been able to accomplish during my time here. So, yeah. Thanks. That's great. Um, okay. Um, so I'm just going to jump around a bit because Susie actually has to leave. So I'm just going to see if Susie has any updates for the school committee. I do. Um, so two updates, although I will say that I just did them today. So that I apologize for that. But coming out of the last meeting, I think I missed some conversation about um, kind of the MSBA and the hiring of the project manager and some things that we should take into consideration. So Robin had reached out to me. I did bring it up at a subcommittee meeting a couple of weeks ago. I then came back to Robin, who then sent me some additional things that we should. So the good news was Bob Shiroli, who's the, the director of facilities, is like all over this. Um, you know, he's very, very interested in um, making sure that we get the right um, the right people on board, architects, all of the people to, you know, to, to make our new high school kind of sustainable. Um, so he, he listed kind of a whole bunch of things in my discussion with him, well, in the subcommittee meeting where I felt like he had a good handle on what he needed to have coming, going into the phase that we're in, which is obviously very early and is about hiring a project manager. Um, I shared that with Robin um, and Rob. Robin got back to me with a few more kind of specific points that she thought were worth bringing up. I did get those over to Bob this morning, Robin. I had a subcommittee meeting again today and raised that with him that I was going to be sending um, some additional feedback that you had provided. Um, I encouraged him to get in touch with you um, if he had some questions. Um, and so the good news on the high school is like that process is moving along. We're kind of ahead of the game to some degree not that that means that it's going to get built um anytime soon but like we're we're really kind of moving along um and the next big milestone is a may there's a may um msba meeting where i think our project manager will get approved i think um and so that's kind of the next big step um on that project and then the other update I really, I had hoped to bring up at the subcommittee meeting that I had this morning and we just ran out of time. We were running, we were, we had our finance committee liaison on the call and he was asking a bunch of questions. And, and so my intention was to, to talk a little bit about as the budget work is happening, have we, has Danielle Collins, the food services director had any explicit conversation about the requirements and potential budget impact of the styrofoam ban uh, for September 1 school start. And so I did not get the opportunity to ask that question of Christine Bufagna, who's the um, business administrator, but I did send her an email this afternoon prior to, to this meeting to just say, hey, I wanted to bring this up. We ran out of time. Um, can we definitely get it on the agenda for the meeting on the 25th? And you know, I suspect that I'll hear back from Christine anyway with either, uh, yep, Danielle's all over it or hey, yeah, actually we need to talk about this. So I'm, those are my two kind of big focus areas. I, I did meet with Julie and, and Melissa and I'm sure Julie's gonna give an update on you know, how we could work better with the small businesses as the, the band comes up. I'll, I'll be honest, I've been really um, just, bogged down with all the mascot discussion and and so my um my school committee my school committee focus has been there and i haven't really been able to circle back with julie and melissa on on that work yet but i i will continue to stay engaged in that and that's really it for me great thank you thanks for that thanks for having time to join um i'll go back to the agenda line items then uh trash reduction and increasing composting um joe do we have any updates you can share or I left it on the agenda from last yep. meeting? I have, I have to bite my tongue. I had a meeting today about that. Okay. Um, I can tell you this. I think, I think something pretty cool is on the horizon. Um, I kind of gave 
Julie a little peek into that and she could probably echo the same sentiment. So I'm, I'm hoping everything will be in place so that I can, I could spill it all out and, and fill you in uh, next time. But uh, okay. I'm not going to put you on the spot then. Was... We, we haven't got to the, to the point where, where it's officially official and I can, I could say anything. So. Uh, we don't want to jeopardize it, but it will all be happy. Okay. I'll leave it on the agenda as a discussion for next meeting then. I also, I was really impressed the communication on Facebook from the town about the success of the textile recycling. Uh, first of all, I was impressed with the communication. I thought it was such a great message to get out. Um, but also it just seemed like a really, the, the town really bought in. That was a, like 65,000 pounds of, of fabric or something like that. Yeah, I, in the beginning, if, if you asked me to, to put a bet on it, it wouldn't have been that high. So uh, it's pretty impressive. Yeah, that's a, that was. Um, and, and I will just say that um, and I'm, I'm kind of, I've asked um, Joe and, and Anne to, you know, look into, in addition to kind of paper bag, which or plastic bag that I know he's already working on, trying to figure out if there's a way we could have kind of like a monthly styrofoam recycling or something like that. So they're looking into that as well. Um, and Anne did confirm that that black plastic has to go into the trash, not into recycling. Yeah. Um, so, okay. so Carol, when you get that information around, we'll try to figure out whether we can find an alternative way for at least people who might be able to take some extra steps. But I, I tell you, I'm now realizing there's a lot of black plastic in this world because it's going into the, and, we, and I'm afraid we've been contaminating the recycling because everybody puts it in recycling. So we're going to do some communication around that. Sorry, Joe. Well, great. Thanks for it. Um, Julie, do you want to talk about the Green Communities Act update? Sure. Yeah. So this, this is another exciting thing. So, the, so as you remember, a couple of meetings ago, we took a vote to pursue becoming a green community under uh, a state program, and it's very much about reducing um, energy and um, saving electricity. And we have determined we've put together a subcommittee or kind of a working group. It's mostly um, town department head. So Joe is an important part of it. Um, the building inspector is on it. The light department is on it. Um, kind of anybody who has a touch point with it. We met a couple of weeks ago. We There's five criteria, five essential things that we have to put in our application. Um, I won't be able to remember them off the top of my head. One is um, zoning, zoning for I think zoning for renewable, either research or installations, some stretch code for buildings, um, an energy baseline, and then a plan to reduce from that baseline over the next five years. Um, a, a efficient fleet for the town and something else. What we, um, what we decided, um, what we determined is that the only thing that has to go to town meeting is the stretch code. Um, and so the we are writing up the warrant right now. And the plan is for that warrant um, to be a town council warrant. So rather than us voting and then sending it to the town council, I think I'm just going to try to take it straight to the town council because the warrant opened on Monday for town meeting. Um, it closes, I believe, at the end of March, and this gives us enough time to kind of talk talk about it. So it should be on our town council meeting on the 22nd. So in order to get green communities, we will have to pass that stretch code through um, town meeting, which is being held on May 8th. So any 18-year-olds or older um, plan on a Saturday town meeting to vote on that. I will say that our new building inspector was very positive um, about the stretch code um, and about working with developers so that they understand it. Um, and, and so I feel like we're on a very positive trajectory. Um, and we've the other probably heavy lift is getting that energy baseline and Jennifer Calais is taking the lead on that and working with the Department of Energy Resources on some modeling. Um, and I think Joe's probably gonna have to do some of the fleet energy baseline. But I, I feel like we're on track to have our application in by um, October and we might become a green community. It'd be one of the, we're actually one of the few communities that's not already a green community um, for a number of reasons. But I think this comes with some grant funding that would allow us to do a lot more um, as a town and as a community as well. 
Right. And Julia, for the for the stretch codes, it's only new development, right? I think I, yes. that was one of the things that we clarified last year was that it's not like if I, you know, if we want to build a deck or something, it doesn't change. Right. It's only new development. And Robin may know more about it. It's new development and there's even size and other criteria. Um, so as of right now. Right. And one of the things is technically they already have to build to that code. It's the way that it is tested um, that really changes in the stretch code. So there's, you know, whether you're doing, it, it eliminates one path of that kind of testing and certification. Yeah, it, it doesn't sound like it's gonna, I mean, I think the stretch code is not as stretchy as it once was, um, but, uh, and, you know, I think it's a really important step and becoming, getting this designation and getting some of the, this um, grant funding will allow us to, you know, explore it as it changes and other options. Julie, do you see any special community outreach as outside of town council meetings? Uh, not at this point. I think if... Um, then our, our um, building inspector comes and, and speaks to town meeting. Um, and let's see what the response is there. Let's see, kind of see how that goes. We may, I think in general, we could do some just green community outreach and include the, the stretch code as part of that. You know, why, why are we talking about the stretch code? It's not just to have a stretch code, it's to really kind of look comprehensively at our town's energy usage. So let's let's play it a little by year, but let's see how things go on the twenty second. Is my advice. February twenty second at your next town council meeting. Okay. Great. Thanks. Yeah, feel free if anybody wants to come and say, you know, as a member of ESC, we voted. We voted. This body already voted to pursue green communities. So really, right. in essence, we've we've voted to support. The, um, the steps that we have to take to do that, which includes the stretch code. Feel free to, to reach out to the town council and say you support it if you like. Would that be just turning up or can just emailing as a support? Yeah, either way. Just, yeah, okay. Yeah, I, think e I think either way. Oh. Um, all right, moving on then, uh, land protection. Uh, Rob, you had... Um... I don't know if you want, Marie. Um, I, I had a question. And, uh, yeah, I just wanted to ask a question. Are the stretch codes listed somewhere? I'm not familiar with that. Um, it's a very good question. I will, I'll put something in the chat about, th there's a website, a state website that lists everything. Not that it's anything that's probably way over my head and it's anything that I'm- No, so it's, it's, it's interesting. And you know, I do think we'll have to get some education out about it. You just proved Yeah, it. I like the education part. Yeah. Thank you so much. I'll, I'll, I'll put some information around. Um, land protection. And, um, and, and I'll just add, uh, Marie, the, one of the reasons why we want to pursue the green community is that there are grant, there's grant potential from the state um, for, for communities who are, are green communities. I think in, once you become a green community, you can access some funding, some pool of funding right away. Um, and then you can apply for additional funding uh, from the state, which we feel like we, would help fund some of the projects that we have in mind. Um, and also mo the vast majority of communities in Wakefield, uh, sorry, in Massachusetts are already green communities. Um, and so we feel a little bit like, you know, we want to be leaders in this, in a lot of areas. Um, and this is one area where we're a little bit of a laggard. And so we're thinking about how do we um, sort of, but, but mostly it's like, because there, there's a carrot at the end of the day um, that, that will help us with some of our initiatives that we want to work on. Is that, is that appropriate, Julie? Did I get that right? Thank you. That was wonderful for me. Thank you. And Marie, in our um, on the Wakefield Sustainability website, um, under past meeting notes, we actually have a presentation that was done by the state uh, representative for this. And in that presentation he gave, he did the formulas and calculated a potential dollar value for grants annually that we could tap into. Not guaranteed, but so we, we have sort of a, we know the value of the carrot, plus or minus. Sounds great. Thank you so much. Uh, I guess with this coming forward, maybe 
but we have social media and website stuff on the agenda. Maybe we need to set something up on the website where that's not just in our minutes. Maybe it's a green communities, but I guess we can. I was we thinking could. we could add that presentation, but mm. I'm not sure if that's, yeah, I guess it, it, it's technically public since they presented it on a recording meeting. So yeah, yeah, I, yeah. I think that's a good idea. Let's pull it out and because it's something people are going to start hearing about as town meeting approaches. Okay. So we have a special section. We can talk to Jen about that. Yeah. That's yeah. I have to update one. the website anyway, so I'll ask her to add that. Okay. Um, a little land, land protection. Mary, do you want to? Sure, yeah. Quick update. So, um, since we last met, I did try to just confirm or deny some of um, the understanding around the process for land protection with Tom Mullen, who uh, is our town council as in lawyer, as opposed to on the town council. Um, Mary, could you back up a little bit since we have new participants? And yeah, I plan, yeah I plan to, room? yeah, sorry. So just um, wanted to say, um, yeah, so I had followed up with him. And the point of um, talking with him is really we, through some discussions, we realized that some of the land that is owned by the town um, that we would have expected to already be protected land um, and one in particular, the Wakefield Forest, uh, we realize it's not, um, you know, there are some level of protections, but it, it, it is right now exposed to the risk of a developer coming in potentially and bidding on it. Um, you know, there's a formal process for how that could happen. Um, and some of those avenues include without any, you know, sort of public say in it. So as currently, listed and so that assumes again and i'm going to just put a qualifier because um you know our attorney uh, in town did not yet have a chance to look at the deed but i did give the example um to this attorney of um, the wakefield forest and and that i was pretty surprised myself to find out that the, it's not really protected and that it has some risk now whether or not that would come to fruition i i think is sort of a question of how, how much risk um, but I think with anything like this, you know, we've seen land developed, um, not surprisingly, and when, when towns, whether public or not, city or towns have land, um, it is a very easy revenue source. So I think you have to look to the future and, and try to plan for some type of, whether anticipated or not, event. Um, so I'm trying to kind of look at this from a proactive standpoint and look at what are the land parcels. Um, I had a chance to talk a little bit with Judy Green, and so she had a perspective as well as the state, but I wanted to clarify um, just from a, an attorney's perspective what the process would be. So that was the most recent step I had taken. Um, there's certainly a lot of public land we could evaluate you know, as a committee, but I think that one stood out to me. Um, Right now, uh, the land is listed with the DPW on at least our land parcels public website. Um, and so Tom had really just clarified for me the process. Um, the process would be to have town council um, really as the board with the responsibility over the DPW since it's listed as the owner right now of that land. Um, declare that there is no longer any need to have the land held or used by the DPW. And so I guess we have to figure out what are the implications of that, right? And then to have the town meeting vote by a two thirds majority to change the purpose of the land to conservation and the custodian to the conservation commission. Um, there was some question last time about our perception that the state, there was some state process but by way of doing that, um, you know, you could technically record it with the state, but he felt like that wasn't, you know, that was just sort of good measure, not necessarily required. Because um, there's been some recent changes to the legislature that I have in here somewhere. But so, you know, I thought that was fairly good news that it wasn't this long drawn out process if that's something, you know, that folks wanted to pursue. And effectively what that would do is it would give it protections under Article 97, 
land protections for the purposes of conservation. And it would make it a lot more difficult. Um, I would say not impossible, but a lot more difficult for that to be purchased uh, by a developer. So this is just sort of a, again, this would be a mitigation strategy. <laughs> um, you know, I, I have no expectation that in the near term, at least that I know of, um, that, that that's a possibility of someone purchasing it. But I think that's, in my perspective, that's besides the point, like there's always unanticipated events. And the next thing you know, something is being developed and you're like, how did that get approved? Um, and this is how, because it, you know, things aren't necessarily protected. Um, you know, Rob had raised the good point of like, how does this fit in with the, the resilience matrix, um, which I probably should provide some context to that. But um, the Envision Wakefield, as part of Envision Wakefield, we went through a process and Julie and Rob, you can correct me on, on my recollection of this, but they developed based on community feedback a, a resiliency fr framework, which basically was a process of um, surveying the public around values of what's important and um, trying to segment it so that when a new project or initiative gets put forth, um, you can kind of assess, does this fit in with what um, what values our town conveyed and ultimately got condensed into this matrix. Um, and, you know, I think if you read through it, it's pretty clear that, you know, just from a health and wellness perspective, I, I work in healthcare too, uh, like Myra, um, there's so many benefits and then just our ecosystem, et cetera. I know there's some wetland, people, you know, ice skate in the winter in there, this little trails and, there's a number of things that I think, you know, maybe aren't fully leveraged right now by our community, but could probably be leveraged and benefit, you know, our, our community and even our, you know, maintain air quality, et cetera. So I, I'm going on and on a bit about it, but, you know, I, I think it's, um, again, just something we should try to take a serious look at as, as we move forward. And it's probably not limited, you know, there's certainly a lot of land parcels that, that we own that we should probably evaluate further. This is, um, the, I would say the largest that is more, it's a forest, so it's park related, if you will. Um, so I think depending on the, the, the land use and everything, we, we would have to take a closer look at it, but it seems like, seems like something we would wanna pursue. Potentially pilot, you know, and see if the, the town has an appetite for this. That's it for me, Rob. Uh, thanks. Um, oh, uh, Rebecca from uh, uh, Conservation reached out and said she'd be interested in helping look at the running. Okay, what's, what's her name? Sorry. Uh, Rebecca Davis, I think. I'll, I'll, I'll forward you her email. I just got okay. back to it today. I, I'd for, um, Excellent. Yeah running some of these land some of these areas through the resiliency framework and and seeing if what what the results come out oh good Let's yeah see. that yeah. would be helpful <laughs> so maybe we could three of us could get together or something to try and run them through so um i'll send you that email and we'll try and set something up sounds good um so i've got plastic bag collection next steps still on there do I just leave that as next steps waiting for next month, Joe? Is it is there um you can. I don't is there any have anything um on that front at the moment? Yeah. I, I could. Okay. Um what I have to tell you, I think is related to something it's definitely related to something a little bit different in the waste diversion world. Okay. What's the status of getting the benches? Um, I filled out the forms and I'm wait I am waiting to hear back. Um, I, I, I get Joe gave me the information and I've I've sent it all off. So I will wait. I'll, I'll log into the, there's a website to log into. I'll log in and see what what the status is on that for next meeting. I have to say I'm so encouraged by how many people on the different Facebook groups constantly ask. What happened to the barrels? What can I do? I don't want to throw it away. Yeah. The same I've message had quite a few emails. Respond, but it's awesome to have people 
having learned of it and then also realizing they still want to do something. Well, maybe we'll have an alternative solution soon. Yeah. And I just send them to Home Depot. <laughs> yeah, we can do the challenge again in the summer if we choose to, if, if we can do it again. Um, but OK. I'll, I'll give the final update on the benches next week, and then I'll, I'll take that off you, Julie. Um, safe, safe streets. I think, Julie, did they met and you have some. Um, so the safe streets working group is the kind of the bicycle walking grassroots group that was formed a few months ago. It's not an official town um, committee, but we are meeting the last Tuesday of every month. Um, so we'll meet on the 23rd this month. Um, some of the youth council might have been involved in the walk audit. So um, one of our, we just became an affiliate of the safe, safe routes school state program. And in the last week or so, a number of us have participated in an audit to try to figure out how to safely kind of traverse the area from Galvin through that awful intersection at the high school and over to Woodville. Um, and so the state's gonna be giving us some recommendations on that, everything from kind of signage and road painting, you know, to more complex things. So that's, um, that's been a really big focus. And the other thing is that um, the HB, which are the town civil engineers are going to be doing a Zoom call on February 24th at 7 p.m. And I can send the information around to this group. Um, I don't think I even have it yet. It should just, it should be on this town website. They're gonna review again, the current design for the downtown area. And the bike group has been giving a lot of feedback to try to get dedicated bike lanes and really figure out intersections and signage and, and signaling and all of that. And so we're hoping that a lot of those bike um, recommendations have been integrated into the design. So that's February 25th, 4th, February 24th. That's it. Uh, thanks. And that information will be on the town website, I'm assuming at some point. Will that, Julie? Sorry. Um, oh, sorry. Yes, for the VHB, it'll be on the town website. For the Safe Street Working Group, right now, my I'm kind of hosting it on my website until we can figure out anything else. So if, you, if you're interested, it's at Julie for Wakefield. It's backslash safe streets. But there's a Zoom link there. Oh, okay. Great. Thanks. Um, uh, committee collaborations. Robin, do you want to talk So uh, after our meeting last month, I contacted the chair of the permanent building committee, uh, reaching out saying, Hey, you guys have a lot of influence over how buildings are, um, you know, who's work, who works on them, how they're built, what are the goals and so forth. And, you know, we have interest on, you know, making improvements with the high school, public safety buildings a little late, but public works will get some effort, you know, some attention at some point. So, you know, how can we work together to get, you know, established goals as a way to improve it? Um, the committee was great. They we're definitely interested. They asked questions about what are, you know, what are we as a committee? What have we done? I was put on the spot, like, what have you achieved? And I was like, um, but they knew about the plastic changes and uh, some other efforts. So no, you know, uh, nothing was set in place, but the conversation has kind of been opened. And they also recommended that I reach out to the school committee, subcommittee on the high school which I think is what Susie's on. So that kind of has already been established as a way to um, work together and have town kind of cohesively come up with some goals for our facilities. So we'll see. Were they aware of the resilience framework? Did that come up at all? I mentioned it, I, I forgot the formal name, so I wasn't able to say it. Um, I believe Joe attended one of the trainings. So he should have been. Oh, you're right. He it. was at the training. You're absolutely right. So he didn't speak up about having been at it, but I remember thinking that I think you and I had talked about it, that he should yeah. be aware of it. So, you know, I did put it in the context of we aren't signaling out the buildings. You know, we are looking at lots of different um, initiatives in this town. So, yeah. Okay. So um, it's on the radar, and I 
we'll try to see if I can do more to communicate any suggestions, you know, let me know. Um, I'd be happy to continue that relationship. Can we post that framework anywhere? Where does I it just, live? I, I just put it in the chat, um, but it lives, if you go to the town website and just type in resilience, it comes up. There's a, it's called Invi uh, Wakefield Resilient. Okay, yeah, all right. Great. And it's there. And it's worth everybody looking through it. Just, I mean, it has things like, oh, we're going to make this big investment for the town. And we thought about community engagement and equity and climate. And it's just a really great checklist mm. for any big ticket items um, or small, right? I mean, any, any kind of actions we're taking in town. And I think the more people on this committee and friends of this committee can kind of remind the decision makers that we have this will have really good dialogue before things get done without thinking about the environment. Yeah, I was just wondering how how are we socializing it across the areas and I know so much work went into it. You know, it's like, how do we, we can't really technically enforce it because it's not a requirement, but how do we highly encourage it? So, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, that's, I, I think we have to keep bringing it up. I, I, it was kind of built, Joe can correct me if I'm wrong, through a state grant through the Municipal Vulnerability, which is a pretty well-known program. So I believe that more and more the state, whenever they give grants on kind of any issues, will be asking these kind of climate resilience questions. So having this is a really important tool for the town too. That's good. So, um, thanks. Uh, ESC social media discussion. We've had this discussion before, and I, uh, we talked about it last last meeting about putting it back on the agenda. Um, we have a website right now. We don't have Facebook. We don't have anything else. Um, does anybody want to have an opinion? And any I, students? Yes, yeah. is Uma here and who and Nick? How's yeah. the youth council using it? How is it working out for you? The youth council has an Instagram and a Facebook. I'm pretty sure. Yeah, that's what we have. So the Instagram is more geared towards the youth because there's usually more youth on Instagram, and then Facebook is for just everybody who wants. And yeah, we basically post meeting dates. So, so public can know when we have meetings and updates on what we're working on. I mean, I think the other committee that uses social media effectively is the Human Rights um, Committee. I mean, it seems to be this, the committees that have events too that use it well or have a lot of awareness raising type things to share. To me, it becomes down to a matter of who's gonna maintain it. <laughs> So does the student, do you guys have your own committee on the town website as well? Do they post your meetings? I believe they do. I feel like I know the youth council meetings are posted in the Wakefield daily item because I see them. I'm not 100% sure if they're posted on the town website though. Oh, okay. Oh, youth they are. I just did a quick search. Yeah, I, I, the youth oh, council is treated just like any other public meeting. It has to be posted. I've got it. I just found it. Yeah. So on top of having the web page, you also have a Facebook page, and you you put the the minutes for the the agenda on um, Facebook and Instagram. Is that what you're doing? And then you get. I don't know if we put the minutes. Uh, I think we just put um, when our meetings are scheduled so people can join if they want. Yeah. So you just create like an event and then you see how many people are gonna, interested in going. And... In addition, Nick, don't we have like a whole outreach subcommittee that works with the social media? Yeah, we do have an outreach subcommittee within the youth council that's targeted towards handling the social media. So I think from my perspective, you know, social media can be used to, you know, educate, um, push out information, um, you know, whatever platform that is, 
you know, link back to, you know, say that we are having an event, link back to, to the minutes to the, to the town page, but more importantly, as, you know, information around, you know, the, say the plastic bag initiative, um, we, we can push out information around that, especially like when things change, um, people kind of look out there, you know, where, you know, in the groups out in um, Facebook, you can push out like, hey, the, the bag, you know, the bag has been extended, um, you know, was, come support us at, you know, these articles at town meeting. Um, so, and just, you know, information around what we're doing, how people can get involved, how people can, you know, help there, there, I think there is a lot of people out there that are looking for, you know, volunteer or just even how, how do they get engaged in being environmentally um, sustainable? You know, I, I think it's a lot of people want to, it's more the, how do I do it? You know, what is the proper thing to, to do here? So I think that social media can help with that education part. So when we've done something before, we've just put it on the town, the government website and they, on their Facebook page. That's the only, like I'll send it to Jen and she'll put something on there for the pumpkins or the plastic bags. And they have over 7,000 members looking at the government town website, uh, Facebook page, sorry. Yeah, I think that's right the now. big right? the cons of how many people we can reach through yet another group site or using the existing sites. And I think last time we landed on use the existing sites, they have more of a reach to a greater percentage of the people in town. Um, that being said, you know, it would be nice to have a site, but you know, it feels more of a feel good. Uh, there, we might be able to test the waters and see how many followers we get. I don't know. I don't, I don't know how, uh, it seems like a pretty straightforward thing to do to set up our own Facebook site. So as long as we're gonna post in both places, it probably can't hurt. And it, this would just be for the educational stuff or if we have an event, is that, are people yeah, more leaning towards it this town. time? I think we still use the town for kind of big things. It's just you know, the town is doing vaccines and everything we would just focus on, on just our stuff yeah they have a there's a lot going on right now obviously right. and they're really the good at, when we push something they're good at getting it out but this would be you know we could remind people about like the black plastic five yeah. times whereas it might only make it once onto the town's page i think you use it also you know to point that like we keep everything centralized on the the town page so you know uh, presentations and and those things continue to go there, but then you make a, you know, social media post to promote those I items out there. So, you know, whether, you know, we're putting, you know, the green communities thing. So, you know, push out a, a post around green communities and link it back to the green communities, um, you know, informational page on our website. Mm -hmm. So, that, you know, it's just, I, I think it's a way to expose it and just get more, you know, people seeing it. And, and do we think it's Facebook and I think, I mean, I'd like to do Instagram because I th think oh, a lot of people yeah. are not on Facebook. And they're right, a lot more younger right. folks are on Instagram and use it. It's a much more visual um, way to convey information. So, you know, I would say that you get kind of a quick hit there. So, I was just trying to look, do you have your own Facebook page for the DPW section or do you put your stuff through the main mm -hmm. one? We do not right now. Uh, yeah. Typically anything we have that's not sent to the newspaper or is like a leaflet that we can go to mailing. Um, we work with Jen upstairs, kind of yeah. give her, give her the message that we're trying to create. And then um, we, we basically give her creative license to, you know, Take essentially what we're trying to say and beautify it, um, yeah. and, and take it take it to the masses, whether it's through Facebook or, or the website. So, um, I'm lucky in that regard because I have that tool to be able to use. Um, the idea the idea of the Facebook page has been, um, you know, 
tossed around a little bit on our end. The only um, obstacle we had was making sure that we are accountable and attentive enough to it. Um, I think sometimes with everything that we have going on, that could be tough. Well, I think the, the good thing about a Facebook page that's focused, I'm going to do the pros and cons for us, is that you know, other people can post things that are followers, not just us. So it's not necessarily about maintenance. It's about idea generation too. So it is bi-directional, right? Um, you know, I, I think if it's a low, you know, a low effort or resource effort, it might be worth doing. And then, you know, start with that baseline and, um, you know, we just organically use it when we feel like we need to push out information. And then otherwise it, allows people in town a voice to convey their ideas and post um, you know, information they think is uh, of value to the community. So it might be a good way to get feedback, and, right, especially right now with COVID. I don't know, my two cents. Um, I don't know what it takes to set it up, but I'm, I'm feeling like it's, it's, you know, we have someone in town Right, who is on point. I think we need to have one or two people who are kind of responsible for it though. Okay. So um, sending it up, I think takes two seconds, if, if that. Um, right. My one concern on your comment on it being bi-directional is that we do have um, examples of town, you know, so uh, citizen pages that can get off topic and um, set tones that we wouldn't want it to, anyone to think that it's ours. So you actually have to carefully, if you allow it to be bi-directional, I have to carefully moderate it and that can take a lot of time. So you may, a page may want to be less people, other people posting to us. I mean, if we were to post something, you could allow some comments, but even then it has to be carefully monitored because, um, yeah, I would. Other I would people agree have with some. That. This is a valid What's point, that? but I think that's going to happen regardless. I mean, you know, it's. I don't. Know. I would think on the main page that it would be more just information we push out um, and not allow allow that by direction. Um, certainly, you know, and as administrators of the page, you can control, you know, how postings happen and you know and those types of things, but at least. On the main page, only post by the us, the the group, mm. and then you know we can potentially decide. And it could be on a per post basis, um, you know whether this post has commenting turned on or off. Um, those type of you know. I, I think you just have to pilot it, and if it becomes yeah. a problem, you make a different decision. It's not like we have a fixed decision out of the gate. Correct. I, I don't know. Flexibility is key. I think. So I guess from, you know, if we are going for it, like, how do we administer it? Like, do we need to set up a group? Hang, you know, hang on, Tom. Is, is everybody in favor of oh, yeah, doing it now? Well, <laughs> I'm, I'm wondering, I mean, I, I'm nervous about content and I was nervous last year. I feel a little bit less nervous this year about content and, and upkeep. Okay. Um, but I'm wondering, I mean, we're coming into a time period where we have a lot to, to talk about and we, have, we haven't talked about Earth Day. Um, and I forgot to email you in time, Rob, to put on the agenda, but I, but we do have Earth Day coming up in a, in a couple months. Um, and so I wonder if, if in some ways this is our test period of like, what is our collective bandwidth? We don't, because we don't have a, like a staff, we don't have a paid staff person that is going to take on our content. Um, and so what's our collective bandwidth to be able to generate content for our website over the next like two or three months, mm. uh, because I feel like between uh, the green communities and the town meeting and Earth Day, I, I feel like that's like we could. There's a lot of potential of of content we could develop. Um, but I, you know, I am certainly guilty of you know having the best of intentions to to follow through on things and then just getting distracted by everything happening in my life. Um, and so I'm one. I, I don't know. I, to me, I, I I'm worried that we will then sign up. And then sort of set some expectations and then between you know the 12 of us or whatever just not be able to maintain content so so, so i agree <laughs> yeah that was actually kind of rob where i was going <laughs> i agree i would i would argue though um that it really depends on what our expectations are for content i mean 
And that, and that again goes back to maybe we should post once after this meeting, we post the recording, right? So you could start really simple with what your goals are for the, for the Facebook. Um, you could post, you know, the recording and any um, materials referenced during the recording. We, and we could start simple like that. And then as folks have uh, the ability to, or the time we could, you know, post things that we feel are relevant to topics we're talking about, or, to, or do polls and things like that. So I, I don't know. I guess my expectation of how frequent, frequently we're going to post is probably much lower um, because of the bandwidth issue, Myra. But I agree, it's it's uh, all consuming right now, at least with my work. <laughs> Julie, um, maybe a question for you would, you know, if we are, have like an idea that we want to put, you know, like, is that something that we could bring to Jen to, you know, uh, as Joe so eloquently put beautify and make it, um, you know, official looking and, you know, do the graphic because it's not just, just the content, there's, you know, potential graphic design and, you know, all of those things, you know, especially in, you know, the Instagram world. Um, to take what, you know, our raw material, what we want to convey as a message, and then turn that into a social media post. Is that something as a committee we can leverage or is that outside we, of- No, we so can definitely leverage her. It's just, you know, she's being leveraged by DPW her. and by Everyone the Department out, yeah. of Health, which is having an emergency meeting right now. And, um, but, but it is a really good idea. I wonder whether we take a little time to think about like, if, if it's an official, town event that we're organizing, then yes, I think it has to be brown, branded, you know, as a town event. You know, like even the plastic bag thing I did on my own little program, it didn't, didn't look great until Jen got it. So, so maybe we say, you know, official town events or official town rollout type things. We have one look and we, and we work with Jen on those and we make sure it gets on our town page and then we can supplement it with other things. I mean, I think in our area, there's gonna be a lot of things we wanna share. We probably see, we'll see things. Anybody who's on the sustainable ex exchange, Wakefield is sustainable, Wakefield exchange, whatever it is, people are just always sharing things. Mm. Um, the other thing is I know we're talking about adding four new members and that might be helpful too in terms of right. bandwidth. Right. Um, I, but I, I, I don't just like the idea of kind of piloting it. And there's nothing wrong in three months to saying, you look, we, we decided we can't maintain this. We're please, please make sure you're following the town website and we'll be sure to get things up there. So I can talk to Jen about how we should set the pages up. Is there anybody, any, guy, any of you guys willing to help with the pilot for the next three months with some content to put in anybody i know this sounds silly but if if we're going to have our own page then it has to have some identity of us and yeah. we don't have a graphic brand right there's no logo there's no something to show that we aren't the town with the seal so yeah. it kind of to roll it out really fast seems a little awkward because oh. you have to have some content and visual so you know some sort of framework yeah, 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 kind Maybe of. So work with Jen on. I mean, Jen is really good at branding. Well, that was was I was gonna say. Or students, if you guys have talent. I mean, mm -hmm. anyone on the committee has any talents in the those kind of graphic things. You know, feel free to brainstorm something. You know, could um, we as, do a contest or something and people submit logos? I don't know. I don't know. Well, we did for Earth Day. Is it? We did that already? Yeah. No, we did those pictures on Earth Day and just people sent them in, but if we could... Oh, yeah. They, yeah, yeah. I don't know, students, do you guys have any interest in kind of learning communications? Like maybe you could part... Jen McDonald is our town communications director. She's a wonderful person to learn from, I think, if you have any interest in, in kind of communications and social media. Maybe, maybe we could have like a student and adult kind of sit down with Jen and have her help us think this through. I bet she has some good insight. Hmm. I'd be willing to try that out. Okay. 
Nick, are you nodding as well? You're inter- are you all interested? Or? Yeah, I'm willing to try that too. Okay. Yeah, I would definitely do that. Okay. All right. Uh, excellent. Thank you. All right. Well, I'll set something up with Jen and we can try to figure out some framework. Yeah, I think I think back. just she'll call it a style guide is kind of what it's called. And it might just be a one page or so. Like we know every time we post, we use these colors or this logo goes there and then we can get some consistency to things. Oh, OK. Yep. So ask her, tell we... her we want her to help us build a style guide. OK. All right. So and I wonder whether both. she would have suggestions about sort of Facebook versus Instagram. Um, I don't, to me, I think we're leaning more toward Facebook just in terms of the content. Um, but, uh, but I wonder whether, you know, I, I don't know if she has, uh, you know, thoughts on how best to reach. Yeah, I think, and you know, we should think Twitter too, I think. But she might have some ideas. Okay. And she'll also know what other towns are doing. She's very tied into what other towns and, and maybe you know some of the students who are working on this could look at other towns and see how their official committees are doing it what kind of content goes on julie does the town have a social media curator type page um you mean like a like a hootsuite or a yeah, like it, like I for for work, I you know I have access for for my own personal or not for for my professional for work. Like I have uh, the everybody's social platform, and so I create a, a post there, and then it pushes it out to all of my professional um, accounts. Hmm. So it's like um, yeah, I, sure I, that's it's another it's cheap. another it's another great question. That's what I was gonna say too. Like I use one called Loomly where I can go in and do one post and tell them what platforms to put it on and it shoots it all out at one time. And yes. we could easily get 30 days of content all scheduled in one evening if we wanted to meet and talk about it. And then we wouldn't have to think about it for a month. Yeah, I think, you know, especially if you're from a standpoint of, you know, A, a the scheduling, we can preload all of that. But also if we are doing multiple platforms, I think that, you know, something like that, um, and I haven't explored, you know, are there ones that are, you know, open source and, you know, free or, you know. Yeah, Hootsuite's not. probably the biggest one. I mean, but, but that's a good thing. Maybe we have access to one. That's another. Rob, put me on. I'll, I'll kind of be on the first call. I was just going to say, if you don't mind, <laughs> as you're saying all that. Yeah, I okay. I'll set right, something what I do up. for my day job. <laughs> and we'll bring it back next next month. It, Rob, and, uh, you know, I... I Depending on when, you know, just want to, uh, I'd also be interested just to, to learn and ride okay. on the coattails. Yeah. Okay. I'll, uh, I'll reach out to all you guys and then we can set something up. Um, uh, of other communities that have um, presence, Melrose, I think is one that people may want to look at and Somerville. Oh, okay. They have pretty active, I think they're town committees as opposed to, um, citizen groups, but like both of them seem to push stuff. So it may be examples to learn from and look at frequency okay. and stuff like that. And then city of Boston has one, but that's a whole different scale and paid people, I think. Okay, well, look, thank you. All right, um, so on the agenda, we have updates. So we have student members comments. So if you guys have anything you'd like to add to the agenda, anything you'd like to discuss, feel free to talk now and we can add stuff to the agenda or if you don't have anything that's fine but just it's an opportunity for you to to have a voice um so sure. if you could... oh sorry no go yeah um absolutely. i just want to say to everyone that me and nick since we're on the youth council we can speak on your guys behalf at our meetings if you ever want us to say anything or mention anything okay yeah. that's great thank you Um, I think I did. did any other any of you other guys want to say anything, Nick or Ab- Abigail? Hey, Rob. Yeah, I'm not one of the students, but no, I did no. want to just say something on on what um, I believe it was just um, Uma who said it. Is I wonder around the social media stuff as, as we get this going. We know that students tend to be more kind of on Instagram, kind of you know older people like most of us regular members. 
um, are more on Facebook. And as we, if we don't go the route that you guys were just talking about, which is those, those tools that you like publish it once and then it kind of goes to all of the channels, it might be interesting to see if the students um, and maybe the youth council might want to get involved in kind of the Instagram piece of this, just because that's kind of more where their peers hang out. Um, and even Abby, like you, you, you at the high school and, and at um, Abby and Addie and Sophie, um, like, I just, I wonder if there's kind of a way to think about that for them to focus on their channel. Um, the other thing that's a much longer term discussion probably is that at a recent school committee meeting, they were talking about the program of studies for next year and the, the standard marketing class that they traditionally offer is going to be focused on social media next year. And um, we might wanna see what we might be able to do of kind of integrating with that class um, and thinking about a pro one of the projects being kind of speaking on behalf of this committee um, kind of as, as a project that might be something that that, that class takes on. Um, I have no idea who's going to teach that class. I don't know how many, I, I think, I don't know how many sections they're going to have. I don't know, you know, what the interest will look like, but just something for us to think about longer term for getting kind of students involved in general, because there is going to be a class that is focused on kind of social media. So just some thoughts there coming back into the meeting. I know I was gone for a little bit and <laughs> um, no, thank you. listening to the, the social media piece. That's great. Thanks. All right. We'll keep that in mind. Um, uh, so updates. Susie's already done. Uh, Town Council. Uh, Julie, do you have any, do you have any updates? No, I think I've kind of walked through everything. Um, Tom, maybe for the next meeting, though, if you don't have it, I did get a call this week about wanting to know where we were on kind of the e electric vehicle charging stations and usage and all of that. And so I will. Yeah, I can actually give I have, I have a dashboard I can. Update. Oh, good. I couldn't find the dashboard. Okay. okay. So that's, that's all I was going to say is I am getting inquiries about the electric vehicles. And I think because there's a big grant program going on and people are trying to figure out how used they've been, they're looking to us. And did, did we hear back about being able to add people? Oh, yes. I'm sorry. So sorry. because we don't have it on the agenda, I don't think we can vote today. But I think on our next agenda, we need to put a motion on to add um, people. And then that has to be approved by town council, just like the youth committee council did this week. They just added to theirs. And so we need to make a proposal um to town council and then we'll present it and town council will vote okay. so it won't be complete i think the all the other towns the renewals are due this friday we'll be a little behind that but if we could next meeting we can vote and then we can get it done in march um and then we can expand so be okay. thinking about what we what we think we want so it's whether it's three, four people, two, one, two. We will say that the one discussion times. that came out of Youth Council was the insistence that it be odd, and we're actually even right now. Okay. Um, so whatever the number we add, we should make sure that voting members are odd. So if I just write up a proposal and then yeah. present it at next our next meeting, we can vote on it. Yeah, and you, you uh, yeah. Can I would just feel more comfortable council. taking it to town council the whole committee having discussed it and and held a formal vote on it okay all right so i'll i'll write up a proposal for the next meeting that we can vote on okay all right no problem okay just a question what's the magic behind the odd is it because of the vote voting yeah it's just so there's not logic yeah just so there's not okay. tie votes all the time yeah it's exactly. funny it didn't come up when we set this up that we set it at eight but the other thing that was talked about for the youth council, and it may be something we want to think about because we have student liaisons, was putting the student liaisons on more of an academic year than a, I think we go April to March as um, members here. Yeah. And it might make more sense. I think they were thinking about it for the youth council because they have a certain amount of middle schoolers, right, guys, and a certain amount of high schoolers. and definitely have middle schoolers to become high schoolers in the middle of that year. 
but but if we want to to think about making it kind of a little more around the school year, we can do that. I'm not sure it matters. And well, so it makes sense if we happen to have a senior who's then going to call, you know, I don't know, college, and then it's sort of the years chopped up, so it would align better. I don't know, summer school. I don't know what, you know, school. I think semester. right now, like we have juniors on, right? So they'll stay on until next, and maybe by next spring, they're seniors and they would roll off anyway. Oh, I guess I they think. leave earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So anyway, just, just think about it. it, it I, I thought it might be something that pertains to us. So one question I've had about our, about our student liaisons is if, if uh, individuals are on the committee and they turn 18, do they become voting members? We talked about that when we introduced them and I thought that they can't because they aren't, we only have X number of established seats of voters. Yeah, I think that's what so, I recall as well. So that's the, um, but I think once you're 18 or once you're, you know, out of high school, you know, you can always apply to be a full member. Exactly. So the seat you take is an unvoting member. We consider you full members. I just, we take there's, like, I think we've taken two votes here. Like, there's like, there have yet to be a contentious vote. Yeah, right. so. Right. Um, um, Tom, do you have any updates? Yeah, I guess uh, I have a bunch of updates now. <laughs> okay. Um, so first uh, I'll throw these in the chat and I'll um, talk about each one. Um, and this, Robin, this hopefully will make it easier for minutes and, and things. Um, I wanted to first highlight, um, and this is around the municipal um, rooftop solar uh, that was done. And so Jen Calais, which is another, uh, she's another commissioner on uh, the gas and light board. Uh, she actually was on the Energy Nerd podcast. Uh, it's actually a fantastic uh, like 10 minute segment. Uh, and she talked about the process of municipal rooftop solar and how we as a town went through that and eventually landed on the public works um, pumping station. And you know the consideration, and Rob, you were very involved in that as well and how it's not just you know looking at square footage of rooftop. It's the stuff that's you know, are there other things on the roof? You know, like HVAC and those types of things. So it's a really cool podcast. If you've got ten minutes, yeah. uh, go and check it out. Uh, the link there. Uh, we as a board back in uh, October. Uh, I could talk about it now because it just was released in the press today. Um, we voted to enter into a purchase and sale agreement for one megawatt of solar power off of a new um, solar installation being installed by um, MWEC out in Ludlow. It's a 30 acre um, solar farm. Uh, the nameplate is gonna be 6.5 and we're gonna get one megawatt of that uh, here in town. And then the third update is around the connected homes program. So for um, demand management and stuff, uh, Connected Homes now supports the Nest thermostat and the Honeywell Home thermostat. So this will be for, you know, when we are having, you can sign up your thermostats um, when you're having peak events. Uh, you know, it allows the utility to uh, turn the temperature up or turn the temperature down, depending on what uh, season it is to um, push down our, you know, load on the grid around that. So those two join the Sensibo thermostat, which was already part of that program as well. Uh, fourth update, uh, or does anyone have any questions before I go on? Uh, fourth update is around uh, kind of heat pump and heating um, and insulation. Uh, the utility, it, we're partnering up with a consultative firm to kind of help, um, it'll be in conjunction with audits and things, but to help folks with heat pumps and analyzing pre-consult, um, recommend and coach folks and then post audit. So they're um, agnostic from an installer. So they don't, um, they're not an installer. They can help you recommend, or if you, you know, have gotten a, you know, a, a quote from an installer to help you validate and properly size uh, those things as a third party um, agnostic uh, person. So I think that's a great feature, you know, uh, to help 
educate folks around um, heat pumps and those types of things. Uh, Julie, on the EV stuff, so two things. Um, I had uh, requested that we um, enroll our charging stations um, into the Department of Energy uh, EV Watts program run by Energetics. Uh, that just happened um, two, three weeks ago, and they will give us kind of that whole program is being run by the Department of Energy to give kind of um, high level, you know, uh, region, state, town um, type of reporting around the usage of EVs, um, the charging stations and, and that type of stuff to give um, more of a broad reporting and then, you know, individualized as well. From our, we do have a dashboard um, from our charge points, and I don't know if there's specific things like I'm actually looking at our, you know, dashboard that was in our packet. If there was things that you were looking to pull out specifically, um, or if this is more of something like you want the utility to give um, an update to the town council. Well, I think um, we can talk about it. Oh, am I? No, I don't. Um, I, we talked about it as a pilot. I just think we're probably about a year in, and so it might be something we want to. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, presentation we, 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 together. Started talking, you know, unfortunately the, um, the chargers went literally went online. Um, I know. The last one went online the day we locked down for COVID. But even with that, we're seeing, you know, uh, we've been seeing a steady gradual um, usage. Uh, so some stats that are kind of interesting, uh, longest duration uh, charging happens at the vet's field charger. Um, some of the shorter durations are happening at um, over by my, my, the uh, Civic Center. Um, and then we're actually starting to see quite a bit of usage at the DC Fast uh, downtown. Um, it's starting to um, really pick up in, in usage. Um, just looking at kind of at session stats, um, November, we had probably about, uh, it cuts off about 60 sessions um, across all of them, uh, dropped in December, and then we're, you know, probably around 50 sessions in, in January. Um, but what's interesting- I can, add, I can add an anecdote. So we haven't had uh, in the last couple of weeks, our first uh, need for an uh, electric car charger. And it, that DC Fast was brilliant. So, um, my husband drove our new electric car to uh, to there, sort of walked, plugged in the DC Fast, walked to farmland, uh, walked to the bread shop, sort of did a little bit of downtown shopping um, and sort of was able to, you know, get a decent charge off the car when it was there. Uh, and then awesome. he sort of got, it was, it really, really was a sort of seamless and uh, very satisfying. That's great to hear. It was uh, Tom, would you post, post the dashboard address? Uh, so it's actually, um, it's paper. Oh. <laughs> um, I can get it, so we can. Yeah, I thought we had a publicly available dashboard. I couldn't find it on your website or on the town's well, website. We, so I don't, I can ask about that. I'm not sure that the it has that capability. Um, you know, anybody can certainly go to, from a usage standpoint, like you can go download um, the ChargePoint app and you can go look at each of our stations and see usage um, in terms of, you know, um, people plugging in um, just simply like it was used at this time. Um, but interesting things coming out of the dashboard where I was saying like December, we had the least amount of um, unique sessions, but we had the most electrical consumption. So, which means that we, you know, people charged longer um, and utilized the DC fast more on in December. So it's just, you know, the, there's just interesting things that get gleaned out of the, the data. Thank you. Uh, is that it, Tom? That's all I have. Thank you. Um, Joe, do you have any uh, updates from the DPW? You can sure. change. Um, <clears throat> I'll piggyback on what Tom was talking about for a minute. So I just checked the rooftop unit that we did just hit uh, 14 megawatt hours. So um, that's kind of where we stand right there. Um, 
As far as new business, uh, it's still pretty busy. It's budget season, so it's been really cramming at the numbers. Um, I do have an answer for a question that came up last week. Uh, I think it was Julie that asked if the replantings up on Sylvan Street next to Crystal Lake had been finished. Uh, I confirmed that that did happen. That is done. Um, so that's the answer to that. And I'll also say I was at the meeting uh, of the permanent building committee when Robin was there. And from my perspective, very quietly in the corner, uh, I think Robin represented us well. And I think that it was very well received, everything she was saying. And I think it certainly kicked the door open for further conversations to come. So kudos to you. Oh, that's great. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. And thanks, Robin. Sounds like you did a great job. All right. Um, Clean, Clean Lake Committee. So we haven't met. So I don't know, Joe or Julie, is is the committee still running? Is uh, Are we just waiting on something? I'm, I'm not sure who to talk to or do I talk to, go back to Bill? I don't know if you have an update. Uh, I don't have one for you now. I'll I'll touch base and bring something back the next time we get together, kind of give you an update of where they're at with okay. everything they have going on. Okay. There, there was a, I actually got a couple of emails in the last week asking me about what's going on, why aren't you meeting? And I, I actually sent them to, to Bill right now, okay. um, but I just I thought I should mention that people are asking what's going on. So um, our next meeting is March 11th. Um, so I put six o'clock. Did we agree six or did we did we want it at seven? Uh, Susie, I think, has an issue with six. And I think Tom might have, but we changed the date so time so many times trying to get ready for town meeting and a different thing. I I looked at the website tonight and we actually have we do have seven PM. So I just wanna go around and make sure everybody's okay to go just go back to seven PM or is six thirty or does anybody have any so, issues with times? So when it's Zoom, I prefer six. When it's in person, I prefer seven because it just I don't have an evening travel. Oh yeah. But that that's me personally. I'd prefer seven. Seven just gives me a little bit more time, but I can do six. Okay. All right. Well, we have seven on there, so. I, so like my, pre my preference is seven, but like I said to you, Rob, I'm not sure how much longer I will end up staying on the committee. Um, yeah. Because I think we may give somebody else on the school committee an, an opportunity, and if I'm going to be the chairperson of the school committee, I would. I'm not sure that I can uh, take on this too. I'm, <laughs> I'm having yeah. a hard enough time making this a priority and I'm not feeling great about that. So um, so seven is easier for me just because of day ending and trying to get things ready. And as I realized I didn't have the video off and you guys see me like walking around here, I'm doing dishes. I'm just trying to like keep this house yeah. in order. Um, okay. So I apologize. No, no. I'll, okay. I, I'll make whatever work as best I can. And Thank you. And uh, the students... In, in view guys, do you have a preference? Uh, Sophie actually had a softball game, I think it was tonight, so she couldn't make it earlier. Is seven okay with you guys? I think either will work, but I know like me and Sophie starting soon will have swim team like later at night, so seven might work better. Okay. I don't really have a preference. Six or seven works for me. Okay. Yeah, same with Nick for me. Okay. All right. I'll, I'll put it to seven as for the next agenda. And that uh, next meeting, so that'd be March 11th at 7 p.m. And uh, we'll go from there. All right. Uh, any matters not anticipated from the agenda? So, anybody have anything they need to bring up that didn't make the agenda in the last? Well, I'm just hours? wondering whether we can, um, you know, for our next meeting, sort of come with some ideas about Earth Day. I feel like last year we we did, you know, last year we were at the very beginning of the sort of lockdown time period and we did this uh you know some outreach and we got people to submit like pictures pictures of, of being in nature or poems and you know pictures of environmental um, activism of some sort and I thought that was pretty fun but I feel like with a little bit more time we could do uh something else or something more focused or um but I know we could go a lot of different directions and you know there's a lot of issues that we're working on um 
So I, I think it is an opportunity to, to bring some awareness. I know uh, the, the Friends of the Lake often do a cleanup. We could do something with that. Um, I, don't, I don't know. I feel like there's a lot of things we could do, but I um, maybe if, if people could think about it, we could talk about it next time um, and spend a little bit of time planning. So we would have the March meeting, and then I think it's like April 20th or something the like 20th. that. Yeah. Birthday. So, um, so if people want to send me just directly to me any suggestions of what they would like to potentially put in for the Earth Day, and then I can compile them, and then I can present them, and we can discuss it. If you send them, just and Carol had um, Carol put something in the chat. Did you want to say something? Okay. Well, yeah, I, I put Earth Day has a, a an excellent toolkit, and so um, and the other thing is uh, a couple of uh, years ago, uh, Rob and I from the um, Grassroots Sustainable Wakefield teamed up with Bill Conley, and we help separate out the trash and get it recycled. Yeah. They were just doing the trash. Um, and the other thing I noticed on Earth Day is uh, regenerative agriculture is, is actually listed. And um, so just thought I'd toss that out there for resource. Okay, thank and you. And also, I mean, the, the community garden is gonna start soon after that. Um, you know, I think that the idea was that to open, um, I mean, not that we can reach the level of regenerative agriculture, but um, I, you know, I just think that there's a lot, it's, you know, that springtime is, is great. Yeah, if anybody's interested in the community garden, you need to get into the lottery. It's very popular. When's the lottery it's starting? Or is it Monday. It, it started Monday or is it started? It, it's, it started on Monday. I don't know what the last day is, but you just need to go to the recreation um, website. Recreation. Sorry, a, real, hmm? a real key thing, um, you've probably seen my post, it's uh, really cool that the Mass Healthy Soils Bill went through within the Economic Development Bill, which is so important to tie those two together. And I'm tracking it a lot, so. Thank you, I pay attention to those. Oh wait, I've got the toolkit. All right, thanks for that. Um, any anybody else have anything? No. Okay. All right. Well, motion to adjourn. So uh, All in favour? Robin. Aye. Me. Aye. Mary. Yes. Uh, Julie. Yes. Uh, Tom. Aye. Susie. Yes. Uh, Joe. Aye. And Myra. Yes. Great. Motion adjourned.